Hey there guys, so we recently took a look at the GMK Tech KB2 Max. Now out of the box, this mini PC came with 16 gigabytes of RAM and it also came with a one terabyte SSD. But I do want to actually open it up and take a look at the inside of it as well as add in a hard drive into the system. Now, right off the bat, there are some complaints that I have about this specific system, specifically the fact that you have to remove these rubber feet at the bottom to actually see the screws that you need to undo. This is a problem because the adhesive that these have on is essentially ruined at this point. So it's only a matter of a time before they actually end up popping off and just end up losing them. This is not a great design for this. So GMK Tech, if you're looking at this, please change this design to make those screws actually accessible without having to essentially destroy the feet on it. But once you actually start to take out the long screws that are in here, it is a very simple process to actually open the system. Once the screws have been undone, you simply just pop it off. And just like that, you have access immediately to the RAM and the SSD. Now, again, this came with a one terabyte SSD and two eight gigabyte sticks for a total of 16 gigabytes of RAM. But of course, you can also add in a 2.5 inch either hard drive or SSD. Now, on their website, it will say it supports a maximum of two terabytes. The reason they say this is because 2.5 inch hard drives max out at two terabytes. When it comes to an SSD, you can put up to a four terabyte or eight terabyte SATA SSD in here. They have pretty much no way of limiting you from using that. It will work perfectly fine on here. I wish more companies would start to advertise that aspect and not really focus on hard drives. But again, we are going to be putting a hard drive in in here specifically because i do want to test out using this system as a jellyfin server and i don't really need fast storage to be able to do that now to use any kind of sata driver simply just going to use this ribbon cable that actually comes with it and there is actually a little slot that you mount it onto right here it's very easy to pop in and once it's in there you're good to go now we're gonna not gonna need this to be attached right now because we still need to mount the actual drive itself but this is how it connects now another little complaint that i have is just how tiny the screws are to actually get out the bracket that the hard drive or ssd will attach to they are very very tiny screws i pretty much had to use the tiniest screwdriver head that i had in my ifixit kit if you don't really have something like that i would recommend getting one it's very useful to have i will link that down below if you're interested in picking it up i'm not sponsored by them by any means i am just a fan of their product and i've been using it for years but once we undo all of these screws here we can actually get access to the plastic bracket and all we really have to do is attach it to our hard drive now you definitely need to attach the little ribbon cable onto it first because the way that it's mounted on here is really not going to make it so that you can actually mount it while it's already in here. So be sure to do that first before you actually putting it into the cage itself. But once you get the screws, you pretty much just attach them to the sides, making sure that it's all completely secure and you're pretty much good to go. Obviously, make sure that the ribbon is properly attached on there and once it's good to go you can pretty much just seal it up and close back up the entirety of the system we can now attach the rubber feet back on here and we can only pray that we don't end up losing these anytime soon but because of the way that this adhesive ends up working at this point it's lost a lot of its strength if your system is not going to be moving then it's not really that big of a deal but outside of that it really does become kind of a pain if you move your system around a lot or if you plan on carrying this around with you just know you're probably going to lose the rubber feet at this point and as you can see here, we do have the hard drive showing up perfectly fine. Now it's ready to use. It's a simple upgrade to do. Another thing that I would suggest considering doing is upgrading to 32 gigabytes of RAM. It's very easy to get in here and 32 gigabytes of RAM can make this very, very nice for things like Premiere Pro. We already showed how great the performance could be. A lot of the times the biggest limitation is just the RAM. It's not necessarily the amount of CPU and GPU horsepower. So it's definitely another thing to consider you could even go all the way up to 64 gigabytes of RAM if you have a use for it, but that's kind of excessive. 32 gigabytes of RAM is going to be almost perfect for practically any workload. But remember that you can always upgrade that M.2 SSD as well as throw in a 8 terabyte SSD if you would like. You can also get 4 terabyte SSDs, which are a lot more reasonable in price. And you can pretty much make a very nice little system out of here that is going to be 
very, very quiet. Of course, I am just using this hard drive because it's what I had laying around and it still works perfectly fine for what I plan on using on here. But anyways, I hope you found this useful. If you did, be sure to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.